thank you everybody for uh, watching The Insider today. Um, my name is Greg Payne. I'm the safety manager here in Joplin, Missouri. To my right here is Jacob Patterson. He's a safety training specialist, also stationed out of Joplin. We're here today to talk about some weather driving tips and some other safety things we're gonna be focusing on. Start out with a safety message. We both drove for a few years, me more than Jacob, but I see this all the time, even my personal vehicle, that you got to watch out for the first storm. The first storm is usually the worst. There's usually a lot of accidents, and believe it or not, uh, winter's coming, and it's already here out on the West Coast. Watch out for those first storms, because people just don't have that mindset yet that, uh, you know, it's winter, it needs to slow down, have proper following distance, um, looking way ahead, making smooth. Um, adjustments in their driving. They don't jerk the wheel or anything like that. So there's usually a lot of accidents, like I said, in the first storm. So that's a, a good tip for drivers. Also, I'd like to kind of introduce myself and my background here at CFI. I started driving for Transport America for about 15 years. I drove for them. I was also a driver trainer for 10 of those years. I was also a million mile award winner in those 15 years. And I also competed at the uh, Minnesota Truck Driving Championships. And I was state champion three times and I also uh, competed competed at the Nationals for three times. After about 15 years, I kind of got off the road, got into the safety department, learned a lot the first year doing that. And then I became a terminal manager, and the terminal is actually uh, North Liberty, Iowa, which is right across the interstate from Heartland. I moved down here about a year and a half ago and took this position at CFI, and CFI has been a great company since I've been here. Jacob, would you like to tell us uh, your history? My name is Jacob. I'm in the uh, training department under Greg. Here in Joplin, uh, we do all kinds of stuff safety related. We do camera reviews, accident reviews, student training. I started in the transportation industry a loader for trucks with another company. Um, I ended up getting a yard dog position there for a couple of years. Um, and then CFI actually sponsored training to get a CDL. Um, so that's how I got into uh, an over the road position. I drove with CFI for about three years. I did a little bit of everything. I did OTR, a little bit of local, a little bit of a dedicated contract with Tractor Supply. And then I found a good opportunity to come in-house and I've been on the safety team for about two years. We train drivers, that's our, our main job. Yes. Um, we try to make these drivers the best drivers in the industry and the best company out there. We watch drivers here and there when it comes to obeying the regulations. Um, we, we also do the camera system. We do remedial for accidents. It's very important for our department to kind of make this company one of the best in the industry. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I still see myself in a driver uh, aspect. I still, I look at our fellow drivers as someone that does the same thing that I do. I may sit in an office, but my, my soul job is to move a truck safely. So today we want to talk about uh, winter, winter driving and some tips to give to the drivers. But one of the most important thing I think we need to talk about first is pre-trips. That's one of the most important things the driver has responsibility for as a driver. Can you kind of elaborate on some things on the pre-trips? I do know that um, our CSA scores for maintenance are not where we want them to be. And a lot of that ties back to proper pre-trips. Most commonly cited maintenance issues are lights, brakes, and tires. Some of the easiest things to check. Having been a driver myself, I'm not perfect. It's easy to get complacent, but when we're not checking these things properly, things can sneak up on us and we can get those CSA violations. When we do reviews with our drivers, we, we do look at logs and we see how much time they allot at the beginning of our day for pre-trip inspection. We're not seeing what we want to see as far as the time spent actually doing a proper pre-trip. We do look at logs. We're looking for time spent to allow that pre-trip. We want that time there to allow us to do our proper pre-trip. We also want annotation. We want to document why that on-duty time is there on our logs. A lot of the time I see that we have some time spent on duty not driving at the beginning of our day, but there's no note associated with it. And so we, we want to see what that time is for. Pre-trip at the beginning of our day, uh, we need our fuel stops documented. Um, if we're doing a roadside inspection with DOT, if we are waiting on road service, we're stuck on the side of the road, we must be on duty, we need to know what's going on. So we want the time and the note. We also see that we're not getting enough time to do a proper pre-trip document. Sometimes the driver wants to save their clock, so they do a pre-trip off duty, then they go on duty to uh, log a pre-trip, but that is a false record of duty status. This is a legal document. Anything happens and this gets reviewed, we're showing an inaccurate log. We may have created a false log, 
we may have not done a proper pre-trip. If we were only showing 10 minutes on a pre-trip, that's not enough time to do a proper pre-trip. And that's how the DOT sees it, and that's how the legal system sees it. Yeah, so we always tell drivers to log it as you do it, right? That's the yes. main thing. We don't want to cheat on anything, especially your logs. DOT officers know if, if you do a five-minute tree trip, there's no yeah. way you can do a proper one in five minutes. Right. So we recommend at least a half an hour, as long as it takes to actually do that proper pre-trip. And we want to do it at the beginning of the day, and any time you pick up a new trailer, you got to do a proper safety inspection. We want to make sure that drivers you know, out there are safe. They don't get broke down out in nowhere land. If you find something that's broke down, call uh, road service, get it repaired. You can get it done there, to, you know, the co sign or shipper, but if you're out in nowhere land, it's going to take three, four hours for a vendor to come out and fix you. So find the problems before you get on the road, and then we don't have any issues or anything that might fall off the tractor and trailer or hurt anybody else in the motor public. So it's very important. Safety, safety inspections are very important. I often get the question, how long do I need to show for my pre-trip? And Greg said it, it takes as long as it takes. There are a lot of drivers that believe that the answer is 15 minutes, and that is not a legal answer. Pre-trip also is based on our CSA too, because we've had a lot of maintenance issues, especially brakes is a big issue with us um, this year. So make sure you're, you're checking your brakes, your slack adjusters, you know, your brake pads and your air chambers, any airlines that are chafing or rubbing together. These are usually the ones that DOTs are finding pretty quickly. Um, it's visual. All they have to do is go underneath the trailer. They can see it right away. If they can see it, you guys can see it. So make sure you, if you're having any issues, call road service and get it repaired before you hit the road. What are some of the things that we actually look for when uh, the, ice, the roads are starting to get icy? What are we looking for? A big one is ice on your mirrors. That's usually one of the first places on the truck that ice starts to form. Um, that or your CB antennas. We also look at the road. Typically in wet conditions, we're gonna have some spray off of our tires or off of tires uh, of vehicles next to us. If we stop seeing that slush kind of spray up, then odds are we're on ice. We're getting to ice. We also, if we look at traffic that's coming towards us, if there is ice buildup or snow on those vehicles, that means we're headed in the direction that that weather is happening. Yeah, and some of the things to look for is like bridges, they tend to ice over pretty quickly. Yes. Um, on and off ramps, they're yes. not traveling very often, so they get really slippery too. But those are a lot of good things to look for. Um, when we're looking for like black ice, black ice can hit you pretty quick. Watch the temperature, I mean, it gets down below freezing, you get and it's starting to rain or something like that, you can tell right away. Those raindrops hit your windshield, they freeze right away. More than likely, the roads are freezing too. Usually the young drivers in the industry, they, they know that they can't be driving you know, fast and need to have proper following just something like that. It's usually the older drivers, they get kind of complacent. Um, they think they know what that truck can and cannot do. But in bad weather, anybody drives on ice or bad weather and snow, stuff like that, um, nobody can handle that truck. So we have some tips we kind of tell drivers to look for. Um, one is like yield the right of way. That's basically uh, proper practice. We have the four P's, which are proper practice, prepare, perceptive, and prevent distractions. So this one would be under proper practice. You'll be able to see drivers coming on the on-ramp and stuff like that. Try to get over. I mean a lot of times they'll hit that interstate and it might be icy and now they lost control in front of you and now you have an accident. So slow down, get over when you can when people are coming on the interstate. Also make sure you're looking way ahead. There's a lot of lights like when tail lights come on you know if something's going on ahead of you, you may not, not be able to see the full length in front of you but Tail lights used to give you an indication that you need to start slowing down. When there's somebody on the side of the road, a lot of times in the bad weather, there'll be people parked on the side of the road, whether it's cars disabled or there might be emergency vehicles on the side of the road. Always make sure that you try to get over and slow down. That's the big thing. Prevent distractions. Try to stay off your radio. Um, a lot of people will play the radio and they look up and, and oh my, I gotta stop. And it's usually too late. Don't be on the cell phone especially in bad weather, that's a no-no. Wash your mirrors a little bit more in bad weather um, because there might be a vehicle on the side of you. They might lose control and now, you, again, you're in an accident. In adverse weather, it takes a lot longer to stop and we want our reaction times and our braking application to be a lot smoother if we need to. We want to increase our following distance by at least double what DOT recommends, which is seven seconds, uh, one, one second for each 10 foot of vehicle. So we should be putting ourselves at at least 14 seconds of following distance in winter conditions. A lot of things I've seen when I was a driver is you'll stop 
and then there was a snowstorm they went through and you look back at your lights and they're all covered with snow and they can't see you so you'll come up to drivers a lot of times you say what is that vehicle in front of me you can't really tell what it is until you're right up on them and their lights are all covered with snow so make sure when you stop anytime whether you're fueling doing your pre-trips or anything like that make sure you go around clear off your turn signal lights your tail lights any lights you can actually reach especially headlights we want to make sure that uh, that the motor public sees us while we're going down the road. Another great tip is don't use your cruise control and don't use your engine brake. I mean, when I was driving, that was a no-no. You have your cruise on, your, your wheels break loose, you're probably gonna go into a jackknife and it happens that quick. Same thing with engine brakes. So make sure you guys, when you're out there, don't be using your cruise or engine brake in bad weather. Another great tip is maintain one lane. And I know when I was out there, we always want to make sure we stay in one lane as much as possible. So yeah, anytime you merge, um, you're changing direction, um, and usually one lane is going to be cleaner than the other lane. So you're coming over ruts, tire marks, getting into a more rough side of the road if you're getting into that left lane. Anytime you're passing vehicles, you're accelerating, you're changing the traction. So we want to drive as smoothly as possible and maintain that, that right lane as much as we can. We also want to look out for snow plows and stuff on the side of the road. So typically, we don't really want to drive aggressively or make any lane maneuvers we don't need to. I never really like passing a uh, uh, snow plow because usually the road in front of them is a lot worse than what's behind them. Yep. Be patient is a big thing. Survival kit. So I always had this when I was driving. I always had extra food in the truck, extra water, extra clothing is a big thing. I had mittens, a set of gloves, keeps your fingers a little bit warmer, a nice stocking cap, um, a scarf, um, and then of course a nice jacket or coveralls that are insulated. Um, like cause a lot of times you're out there and they shut the interstate down and now you're stuck for two days. What are you gonna do, okay? So be prepared for that. Always make sure you have some food to eat and something to drink and warm clothing. Some other things to have on the truck with you. Um, cat litter is a big one. Mm -hmm. Perhaps a cheater chain. Um, just a section of chain that goes around both of your tires to get out of a parking spot or to get back under a trailer if you're trying to back in. Chains is a good thing to talk about. Uh, we do run routes that require we have chains on the truck. Uh, the best advice I can give is if you have to put chains on, you shouldn't be rolling. But occasionally we have those DOT stations that require you put chains on the truck in which case we should use them to get to the nearest safe location to park. We started putting the new Sam Sarah camera in here in January. Close to having all trucks with the new cameras in it. Hopefully it will be completed by the end of the year. Some of the questions drivers have is, is the outward uh, facing camera and inward camera turned on all the time? And yes it is. In the safety department we actually let drivers cover the inward camera only. Okay, We let them do that if they prefer. We do have some drivers that keep it off. They want to be seen. Um, we have DFIs that have it. And then we do have to have some drivers uncover the inward camera because of safety reasons, whether it's accidents or um, get caught on the cell phone, that type of deal. The camera is a DVR. We can go 363 hours and get a video, okay? But the thing is, it's always recording, but the only time we can see any, anything is if an event is triggered. There's certain events that trigger the camera. One is following distance. And then if it gets triggered, it's, there's a 10 second video. Um, we see events being triggered by harsh right turns, harsh brakes, rolling stops, another one. We also watch, make sure the trucks aren't speeding. Um, those are things that actually trigger a 10 second video. What do we do when there's a 10, or 10 second video and events on a driver? I get to call you and talk to you about it, let you know what we see what we expect to see, and then moving forward, that could escalate to having you routed in so we can show you in person what we're looking at and what we want to see. Following distance is the number one camera trigger that we get. I often hear that, you know, when we're in heavy traffic, cars cut us off, they get in front of us, um, and that's what you're seeing. But that's not what I'm seeing. We don't get an immediate trigger just because a car got too close. Um, we get a trigger after a sustained period where we're maintaining that following distance that's too short. Cars definitely do get in front of us. They don't, uh, they don't appreciate what it takes to drive one of these trucks, especially in big cities. They, they're gonna get close to us. As the professional driver, we need to actively put that space back in between us. We all know that drivers surprise us from time to time, and if they get on their brakes after they've gotten that close, we don't have enough time to react to that. So we need to be defending ourselves. Right. And a camera is not just for punishment for drivers. It's basically a way to kind of train drivers and, again, make them a better 
better driver over time. We also use it, of course, as, to protect the company. Um, we've had it for serious accidents. We had the video being captured by the accident, and we use that to keep us out of litigation. So it, it's helped the company, and also, like I said, helps the driver at times to become a better driver. And sometimes we bring those drivers in, and we show them the videos, like you said, and a lot of times they say, oh, well, I didn't know I was following that close all yep. the time because they get kind of complacent, especially yep. the veteran drivers. So once they see that, they're like, oh, yeah, I really need the the, the step back a little bit and keep my proper following distance yep. in some of the events that happen. And one thing we want to really stress is being the captain of the ship. We at CFI and the safety department, we want to make sure that you guys are the ones that are driving that truck. Heartland has started a, a new program with their other three trucking companies. They will send messages out to trucks when you're coming into a bad weather area and letting you know that, hey, you need to start finding a safe haven because you're heading into bad weather. What they're looking for is um, like snow, sleet ice, um, hurricanes, strong winds, tornadoes, anything like that in the United States, they will actually communicate that information um, to the drivers and all four companies. Also, if you go into the driver's app, and there's a little icon with a truck. It basically says a weather shutdown. Click on that and it'll show the trucks in your area that are actually shut down. This kind of gives you an idea how full the truck stops are. When there is bad weather, you don't want to head into the weather. You want to find a place before you get to the bad weather part. If you get into the weather, usually all the places are all full. Make sure you just reach out to operations, let them know that, hey, it's pretty bad here still. It might be a couple more hours or where the situation is. Can't get in the driver's app? Make sure you call IT. If you can get in the driver's app you can re and you have questions, you can reach out to your fleet leader or anybody in the, in the safety department will help you out. So thank you everybody for watching The Insider. Um, thanks for Jacob for being here with me and talking about some weather tips. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yes, and then uh, yeah, if any drivers have any questions, please reach out to the safety department. But uh, the big thing is, is weather's here, be safe.